Hey guys, Beefcake, Beefcake Racing Day is an exciting day. We're about to put our 2022 supercharged, Vortex supercharged F-150 on the dyno. We're gonna take it up to our uh, installation partners up finish line performance where our dyno is. We're gonna throw it on the rollers, see what kind of horsepower it's putting down. Uh, with today's tune, we're running a five-star tune. Josh Newman over there has done the tuning. As you guys probably know, we have a lot of great tuning offerings. We use uh, Five Star on the trucks. We use uh, JP Performance Juggernaut. They do an excellent job. Uh, we use Ortiz. They do an excellent job as well. And we offer the liver noise tuning. On this particular truck, we started out with a Juggernaut tune on it. Matt's on vacation for two weeks. He's going to be out of town. Uh, so we did. We got a lot of the street logging done, but we didn't get to put it on the dyno yet. So. Uh, the last week, I've spent probably three quarters of a tank of fuel over a few days. Me and Josh been doing a lot of data logging on the street, got it dialed in. His tune right out of the gate was great, especially considering we've got the Cobra Jet Manifold, a VMP Twin Jet 69 under the hood. So it's a little bit different combination than what we're used to. And then we threw a Vortec on here, a little custom fabrication on the piping. So I'll show you under the hood one more time before we head up. And again, we're going to be doing uh, torque models, as they call them, and tunes with all the different tuners on this truck. We're all going to let them have a hand on it. So they're all going to be able to do an excellent job on the tuning for you. All right, so we're going to take a look under the hood. As you remember, if you've been watching the videos in the progress, we started out with the new Ford Racing of Gen 2 version 2 with the Cobra Jet Manifold. Don't know how much power it makes, especially on these trucks, but, uh, well, when I say that, we did make about a 40-wheel horsepower increase between the tune and the headers uh, and the intake on the truck. Um, we did add a second blow-off valve. This isn't something that's standard on there, but I just love the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So we had a second blow-off valve just so I could get some uh, sound up higher uh, because the blow-off valve is down lower. But so we got the Cobra Jet Manifold. We've got a JD fuel system feeding uh, four Innovations fuel rails. We've got the FIC 1000cc injectors under this thing. But down here is the heart of it all. It's the uh, Vortec V3 SI Supercharger. Now this is the smallest entry level supercharger that Vortec offers. It does come with an actual tube and inlet and everything. I like to just run an open filter because at the drag strip on the dyno, we always pop the filter off. That's going to get you the most horsepower. It's going to run the fastest. I mean, we've run cars into the sevens with Vortex Superchargers. Uh, all the head units up, in, including the new V13, will fit in this bracket. So there's a lot of head unit upgrades if you want to make a lot of power. But again, we're going to throw it on the dyno today and just see what she does with kind of a basic setup on here. Guys, I just wanted to show off the interior real quick again for those that haven't seen it. Uh, we did the Corbo seats. We used planted brackets. We did have to get some bolts and things to make everything work. We did the center console upgrade, shifter works, everything like that. We also did the big screen. In my opinion, this is how Ford should have built these regular cab trucks. When they're going to make a Lightning, this is what a Lightning should have been. Not some electrified four-wheel uh, four wheel crew cab. This is what a Lightning should be. Regular cab, cool, badass seats, badass center console, just everything looking really, really trick. And again, just to go over the outside with you one more time, we've got the uh, Weld Lagunas on this right now, but we do have some of the really cool uh, RTS series, the USA made versions coming. Uh, our friends at Liberty Collision, uh, they did the bumpers, the hood, the mirrors, all that kind of stuff. They did some cool stuff on the badges for us back here on the truck too. Got those all painted, uh, looks really nice. We did the Morimoto taillights on it, again, Mirrors, really cool. Uh, front wheels, 20 by sevens. We got the Alpha X headlights, uh, really cool painted grills and everything like that. And finishing it off with the Savini's four inch cow hood. Just really, really sharp, really, really sweet. Let's head up to the dyno. Let's see what she lays down. And again, as far as the shifting goes, I mean, you can hear that thing rip. I mean, you hear that rip, the shifts are great. The shifts are crisp. It's amazing. Like I said, we could go straight to the drag strip right now. Josh has done an amazing job on this. Uh, we're super, super happy with it. But again, we're going ahead, get you some dyno numbers. And keep As you can see, we're at the pump here, filling up with uh, Pump E85, local Casey's. They're probably the cheapest in the area. We're just running Pump E85 in this thing. Nothing special, two something a gallon. Definitely the way to go. All right, guys, we just finished flashing our dyno lock file, which basically keeps it from uh, shifting into uh, a different gear in manual mode. Uh, we actually set manual mode to where you can, it'll shift for you so you don't uh, blow the uh, belt or chains off your cars. But we're getting ready to make some hits. All 
Okay, guys, now we're going to go over the dyno numbers. What I've got pulled up here for you is the graph. I've actually pulled up the dyno from when we dynoed with the Cobra Jet manifold and with the uh, blower setup. Just so you can see, dyno is just a tool. I don't get too hung up on, you know, peak numbers like a lot of people do. Our dyno is a little bit stingy, but I do like to have just for a before and after. So you're comparing apples to apples. So if you got here, you see uh, previously we made 413, but that's actually, if you look here, that's a false number because there's a spike letting off at the end. So if you look here, really we made about 401, was right at 400, 401 is what we made with the Cobra Jet. And we made right about, uh, the torque will be accurate. The torque was 347.39. So if you look at our new dyno graph, we made 739, right just shy of 740 wheel horsepower. So 739 horsepower compared to right about 400 before. If you see here, this is on about 10 pounds of boost right there where we, uh, let, where we made peak power at. So that's a pickup of, we'll just say 400 to 739. We picked up basically 339 rear wheel horsepower. That's a substantial gain. Um, probably 90% just doing the quick math, 85%. So that's a huge increase over what we had before on the truck. Uh, peak torque, we picked up 566 foot pounds of torque uh, where we were at 347. So we picked up an additional about 220 foot pounds of torque. So the other thing that we look at is in different areas of the curve as well. If you look here out here, again, at peak, you've got big, big numbers here. Uh, the biggest thing, too, on the torque, uh, even though your peak torque right at the end here, you're 552 versus 957 or 297 where you let off. So at the end here, we're up right about 250 foot-pounds of torque, where, again, we only picked up at peak, we picked up about 221 foot-pounds of torque. But out here, again, we're up. 255 foot-pounds of torque, which is really good. And that carries, you know, all through the graph if you look at this. We're 564 versus 334. Let's pick up a 230 there. In here early on, 550 versus 343. So we're over 200 foot-pounds there. So you're picking up a lot of torque. Now, the nice thing is where we're shifting at, you know, we're probably going to be shifting somewhere around the 7,400 mark with this 10-speed transmission. I mean, we're going to be coming in in these big areas. So that's the nice thing about the centrifugal. I mean, you're shifting 724, you're coming back in, 650 wheel, just a great, great power band on these. Um, the centrifugal, I like them because they give you a little bit more time to hook up. Of course, we added the circle D converter on ours and we're already, I mean, I'm spinning tires in second gear, even in third gear sometimes. Two to three shifts, man, this thing shifts so hard. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, we've got some customers that are already pushing like 14 pounds of boost, and they're making, you know, 675 just on pump gas, which is really good through this truck drivetrain. Uh, we will be turning the boost up, but I wanted to keep it on low boost to start. Just go out, get it down the track. We made one trip to the track. It was a horrible local track, ran an 11.0, and that was on a second gear lead with a centrifugal. I couldn't even get the truck to hook in first gear, so I can't wait to get to a, 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 a track and, and get some good hookups. This was a 16060 foot, went 11.0, 3,500 feet of DA. The temperature was hot. That was hot off the street, no cool down. I just wanted to make a quick couple passes and see what it did. But so far, I'm very, very impressed with this kit. And again, this is the smallest head unit offering that Vortec makes. And we're making through a truck, uh, big tires, 739 rear wheel horsepower. 
Uh, again, we're just going to keep turning it up, making more power. I expect we'll be eight, 900 as we turn things up and just really excited to see how far we can take this truck. Again, anything you need for your truck, your Mustang, your Hemi, your Camaro, beefcakeracing.com. We get you dialed in on everything that you need.